Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Ellensburg, Washington, USA. Here's to you. You found us. We're back at it again. Here's to you. Sunheit. The local time is 12.42 p.m., and we will begin our session, our first session of Geology 351 at the top of the hour. At 1 o'clock, that's more than 15 minutes from now. I'm starting a little bit early because it's been a few weeks since we've done this. I want to make sure we are, uh, we're communicating and everything is fine. We have Emma. Uh, with us uh, already, and uh, we had Matthew and Andrew, um, who haven't seen each other in a year, so they're getting caught up outside. There's there's a lot of excitement here on campus for a bunch of reasons, so I'll, I'll fill you in on that in just a second. But let's, uh, let's say hi to everybody, make sure that we are functional. Where are you viewing from? Uh, most of you know the drill by now. Hey, Lila says it's five by five, and uh, Jack is uh, southwest of San Andreas. Sean, five by five. Ashley, five by five. Oh, good. So you can hear me okay. You can see me okay. ATS misses the cat. Don't we all? Hello, Greg. Caldwell, Idaho. Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Um, too fast now to read. Toronto, Canada, I think I saw. Calgary, Alberta. We got the Canadians in the hizzy. Marysville, Washington, Finland. Um, yeah, this is a different time frame, isn't it? So um, I forgot to look that up. I'm curious, actually. So in Finland, is it what? Approaching uh, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 9 p.m., uh, et cetera. I'd just be curious what time it is there. Just I won't ask that every time, of course. Uh, La Los Angeles, hello, Whatcom County. Uh, Winnet, Montana, Edinburgh, Scotland. I'll keep my eye for some some times here. Some some uh, twenty three hundred. Oh God, military. Uh, Maria says it's eleven o'clock p.m. I guess right. Um, yeah, the live streams are at three sixty. Not the the uh, wait. Shouldn't it be seven twenty? Whatever. Uh, Murray, Utah, Nampa, Idaho, uh, California, the Central Coast. Oh God, you Europeans with your 2100. I, I, I gotta I gotta brush up on that. Uh, it's a reasonable hour, I guess, for for Europeans. Um, but you know, it's not in the middle of the night, I guess. Uh, thank you, Cliff. That makes me feel better. 720 with no buffering. Wonderful to see. 10 p.m. in Holland. Thank you for making it easy for me. Blodgett, Oregon. Hello. Let's do a few more of these. Uh, it's it's still a quarter to the hour here, and we only have uh, one student in the room. But I will um, I'll develop a culture here, including trying to get people to come early so we can visit. Um, I'll say a few hi to a few more things. Grandpa Carl's in Granger. Hello, Tacoma, Washington, Warsaw, Poland. Hello, Powell, uh, Thurso, Scotland, Guatemala. Hello. Newport, Washington, Lake Ozarks, Missouri, Claremont, California. Let me get out of your way in case you're desperate to see the outline. I don't know why you would. Wales, it's 9 p.m. Thank you. Bergen, Norway. Hello. Ontario, Canada, Louisiana, Natchez, Washington, Janesville, Wisconsin. That's Rock County, huh? UK, Langford, Greenwood, Mississippi, Palm Desert, California. So I, I, I guess you're you're... I thought this would be more of a struggle for me personally to get set up again, um, but it uh, feels like uh, I guess I did it enough times last quarter where I feel pretty comfortable. So I'm glad things are working without a hitch. Now, of course, I've jinxed it. Salt Lake City, Utah, Tillamook, Oregon, Penticton, British Columbia, Savannah, Georgia, Alaska, Bangor, Maine, Powell River, British Columbia, Germany, hello, Claudia, Boise, Thank you, Ben. Uh, Marshall, Michigan. Chihuahua. Redding, California. Bloomington, Indiana. Phoenix, Arizona. I was just down there last week, Scott. Uh, Calajero from Switzerland. What up, homie? Microphone sounds good. Thank you. Hey, come on in, you guys. Come on in, you guys. 
Fort Hood, Texas, Madison, Wisconsin. I'm already live streaming, but feel free to just chit chat it up. We got uh, Rachel, Colton, Megan. Sorry, sorry. Hello, how are you? Remind me of your name. Ashley. Great to see you, Ashley. Yeah, whatever feels comfortable to you guys, that's great. Tigard, Oregon, Glasgow, Scotland. Hello, Zurich, Switzerland. Blacksburg, Virginia. Ronnie. Shy Ron A. from Littleton, Colorado. Argentina, hello. No, no, I've seen you before. I'm glad that you're with us today. Blair's on the bottom of Lake Idaho. Oh, my God. You look different, Bryce. What is it? Oh, you're a loper. That's right. You're a loper. You're not an interloper. <laughs> How's it going? Your name, please? Logan. Logan. Good to have you. And your name, please? Jessica. Jessica. Hi. Come on in. Sit wherever feels comfortable to you. So feel free to introduce yourself to each other. I'm, I'm chatting to the, the folks who are uh, watching us from, uh, from their homes. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple things to say uh, before we begin. I'm, 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 again, very pleased that we are functional. Um, uh, we got home from our trip to Arizona, I guess it was Friday, and uh, over the weekend we had... A lot of wind, big front came through, snowing sideways, you know, the whole thing. And uh, the wind just shut off overnight. And if you know Ellensburg, Washington, it's, oh my God, Rachel, you are really working it. I like it. It is? Oh, the supply chain people were in here. We, I, yeah, we, I need to make a special request, get the, 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 Fumigators to come in after the supply chain people. Yeah, I'm sharing the classroom for the first time this quarter. This is this is going to be unusual. I, I apologize for the stickiness. Um, what was I saying? Oh, it is idyllic out there right now. Uh, there's no wind. If you're if you're familiar with Ellensburg, we have lots of wind issues here, especially in the springtime. But um, uh, the flowers are out. People are walking around on campus. I mean, I can't tell you how great that feels. I just sat, I'm a state employee, you know, so I sat, sat in a bench outside the building for like 20 minutes just watching people walk back and forth. I mean, it's not a full campus, obviously, but it, it does feel different here. And I guess that means that professors are finally willing to come in and teach a little bit face-to-face. -face. I won't go on a big rant, but... Uh, Anyway, things are looking up here locally, and I hope that they are feeling um, good where you are. It's typical first day. It's quiet in here. Would you please introduce yourself to people sitting around you? I'm talking to these guys, but please, please, if you don't know somebody, please turn in your, your, your classmates now. You're in the same damn program, for goodness sake. Thank you. So today is a, a typical first day. Um, but one of the objectives is to set a certain culture that's in here, especially with these unusual times. Oh, good. Oh, my God. Oh, this is great. Oh, that's so great. Are you loving it? All right, let's do a few more highs. I'm going I'm to talk in a little bit more of a hushed tone here. I want, I want this, I want all this conversation to continue. Uh, Devon, UK, hello, Scottish clan, Maxwell. Uh, oh, you'll have a new Mason. I already know who it is. Uh, Forest Grove, Oregon, Notre Dame, Indiana. Uh, DC Metro. Patrick, age seven. Hey, Patrick, how's it going, man? I don't know if you've been with us for a while, have you? I love you, Patrick. I'm glad you're with us. Is this a good hour for you? Great to see you, Patrick. Patrick, I don't swear anymore. Have you heard? 
I don't swear anymore. <laughs> uh, San Diego. Hey, Oscar. Akron, Ohio. Uh, Aurora, Illinois. Squim. That's Tim. Portland, Oregon. All right. Well, I am going to go talk to some of the new students that I don't recognize. I thought I recognized most of the names, but I guess I don't know everybody. And uh, we will start. Uh, we'll start in about seven minutes from now or so. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to check one more time just so I don't have to think about it. We are doing okay, huh? Uh, veterans of, of the 101 live streams, we're, we're totally fine. I mean, everything is almost identical. Got the spinning globe. I had to find that. I tossed everything in the closet. I think I got everything back out. We're good? We're good? We're good. Thank you. I'm going to talk to the students. Young man, how are you? I'm doing well. Logan. Yep. Logan. Did I overhear? See how impolite I am. I was I was talking to these guys, uh -huh. but I'm also listening. So you're are you currently at the high school? Uh, I was the past two quarters. Okay. And then I should be kind of in and out of there with Mr. Hashimoto. Hashimoto. Do you know Mrs. Zentner in the science uh, department? Yeah. I've been in a few meetings with her. Have you? Yeah. Can I ask what your meetings were about with Mrs. Zentner? They were you know, just, I'm, uh, I'm, what are they calling them? PLC meeting? Okay. With the systems of the earth science teachers. Yeah. Okay. Good. So you haven't had Mrs. Entner in class? No. no. I heard she's really hard and not <laughs> oh, yeah. very nice. I'm related to her. So. Oh, that's good. Well, good. So did Hashimoto suggest this or you're just kind of doing a bunch of running start anyway? Um, no. I'm in the, well, I'm with my last year, my STEM teaching program. And so I was there kind of, he was my mentor teacher. Hold it. You're in the last year of your STEM teaching program. Yeah. And you're still in freaking high school? No, I'm not in high school. Okay. All right. Now I, I'm confused. I was helping teach the high school. Ah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I okay. Wish. <laughs> okay. I got it. Okay. All right. I feel it better now. Okay. So that, oh, I got it. I totally got it. Yeah. So you do not have a formal student teaching gig, or you have the head that already? No, that'll be in fall. Oh, the end of fall. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad you're here. Okay. Oh my God. Thank, 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 thank God I got that straight. How you guys doing? Oh, 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 oh. Hey, uh, hey uh, sh Ashley. It's not that hard. Ashley, come on. Ashley, and Ariel. Ariel. Oh, that's good. You guys can never, ever sit away from each other. And I'll just say, hey. <laughs> well, good. You guys, you guys, if you're comfortable back there, that's wonderful. You know, Bryce is a really nice guy. Am I? That's what I hear. Is that what you hear? Nick? Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. And there's Rhiannon. How are you? Running on low sleep and Red Bull, but I can't. What the heck? It's the first day. You're running on low sleep and Red Bull. I drove from Marysville this morning. Oh my God. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. That is dedication. I was just so excited about school. I couldn't sleep. Oh, see, now you're saying all the right things. <laughs> oh, that's good. I good. Thank you. I feel good. Good, good, good. Hi. Hi. Help me with your name. My name's Mary. Mary? Yeah. Have we met before? No, we have not. Okay. So it's not just the math. Sure, right. <laughs> and are you in a certain program here, academic um, program? Uh, environmental studies with okay. a specialization, and I'm graduating actually this spring. Okay, so okay. What's your specialization? In geology. It is? Yeah. Have you got any advising from any of our folks in the geology? Or are you just um, kind of like taking... Lisa and Lisa. Carrie. Good, okay. Both. Good. Well, you've gone to the right people then. That's great. All right, Mary. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Remind me of your name. Rachel. Rachel. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here with us today. Oh, good. Good. Rachel, 
Oh, is it really? Oh, the good old days. Oh, 210. Oh, he's got his 210 10 pen too. Uh, I bought this one later. Oh. Imposter. Imposter, yeah. So you guys, like, haven't seen each other in, like, a year? A year since mineralogy. So you, like, tr went to hug, and then you, like, play. I, maybe, I, well, no, we'll hug. So you went outside, had a smoke, and got caught up, huh? Nice. Right. Okay. It's good. Quick smoke. <laughs> Days are over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Luke. How's it going? Oh, the EHS homies. Yeah, okay. You know, right. you know we got to stick together. <laughs> now, were you guys in the same class at Height Well, yeah. Well, I think. What year were you? What year did you graduate? Uh, 2018. You're 2018. So I graduated 2015. So yeah. we were apart by a couple of years, but each other. right, we knew each other from like outside activities and all that. Music, like, yeah, mainly orchestra. But then also you're tennis. Yeah. in tennis, yeah. Ah, the old Jack, the old oh, Jack yeah. years. Oh yeah, lots of tennis. Nice, lots of tennis. Okay, well, good, good to have you guys. How, and Emma? I've already talked to you. Don't take it personally. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go deeply again. I mean, I went a little bit too far last time talking about the majors. Like, I don't know. Good. And you guys know each other, or did yeah, you just met. you just met? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But my roommate's over there. Oh, you're really branching out. This is nice. <laughs> Which one's your roommate? Uh, Logan. Logan. Okay. Cool. Well, good. Well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Hey, you guys. Yeah. You guys can sit wherever you want. Sit closer. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be way back here, right? So help me with your names again. I'm Alexis. Alexis. Liliana. Of course. Okay. Good. Well, it's great to have you both in class. So wherever feels right. Okay. You bet. Hey, man. Remind me. Hayden. Hayden. Glad you came today. Um, is that going to be a, a struggle? Remind me where you're living. I, I do have an apartment here. Okay. So it was uh -huh. just because coming off of spring break, I getting got over here. So I had to drive over this morning. I see. That's never fun. Okay. All right. Well, good. Hey, Kyle. Hey, man. What's going on, man? Oh, I got back from all this late. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, you're gonna, you can hold down the back if you want, or you can come up and join the party. Whatever feels right to you, man. There's there's plenty of spots, but what? yeah, whatever, whatever. You know how this works. Once people sit in one chair one time, that... They're like, you know, I don't know, they like mark their territory somehow. Bryce, how do you mark your territory? Don't answer yeah, that. Apparently it doesn't really well. Like no yes, of course. Energy. I don't know what kind of energy you're putting off, but it's right. Yeah, seriously, Bryce. I think it's time to look in the mirror. Look at this. We got everybody else sitting. All right. Now, now I went too far. <laughs> yeah, he does. Oh, a sphere of influence. Yeah. That's, that's a creative way of putting it. I'm going to slip behind you here. Okay, oh, this is exciting. Oh, that's an excellent choice, Kyle. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. And by good morning, I mean this afternoon. Hey, I'm used to saying good morning, but that's not the case. This class meets at one o'clock, for goodness sake. And I am so glad that you have registered for this course. Now, the first question is, do you want to stay in here? So mm, that's our objective today. This is an unusual class. The last thing I want to do is scare you away, but I do want to let you know what the plan is. And this is a weird gig anyway, but then of course we're in this weird time as well. And so I always feel like it's very important to lay out what I want to do with you and what my objectives are. And you know that there's other elective choices, so you have the whole week to add and drop what you like. So again, we have a full class. It's wonderful. I know some of you. I don't know probably half of you. Uh, so it's a chance for me to get to know you, and there's lots of ways that we can do that. And the energy is excellent here on, on the first day. But I want to let you know what you're getting yourself into, and I don't mean that to sound scary. I just mean, let, you know, I do things differently than, than, uh, than everybody else, it feels like. So I want to make sure that that's clear. Um, 
today is kind of a just introductory session, but normally I'll have a big outline here and I'll have you write that down so you can kind of organize your thoughts and then uh, we can kind of go from there. And I'm going to assume you don't know much about uh, what I have been doing outside of the classroom. So I'll just fill you in very quickly. Uh, there's a camera here. And uh, there are people in this little uh, pinhole. And uh, they're watching right now live. And so I've been live streaming pretty much for the last year, mostly from my house. And it's a YouTube channel. And it has grown in uh, uh, viewership. So right now we have 1,000 people watching from around the world. So there's 20 of you and there's a thousand people right there. And they can hear me because of this microphone and I'm kind of I'm kind of right in this little box here. Obviously, this is not a whole set of cameras. This isn't a multi-camera setup where they follow me around the room and I can't have you on the, on the camera anyway for a bunch of reasons. So um, just letting you know that that's the case. I'm guessing some of you know about this. And so that means you can watch these in replay when we're done. Now, the goal, God, the energy is great. Let me just, hold on, just, let, me just, let me just soak this in for a second. It is electric in here. Mm, okay, thank you for that. Um, it's a total different energy than a typical 101 classroom. Let's just put it that way. No offense to Mason and, and friends. Okay, so, um, I was about to say something, can't remember what it was. Let's take another moment to enjoy that. No, it's just, okay, all right. So I rarely talk about my other projects. I just did briefly to explain this setup, but I'm gonna do more of it right now. And I have to give you that background so that you can see why this course exists. I think it's very important to see why this course is in our program and therefore why I've made the choices that I've made as I set up this class. Then we'll get down to the nuts and bolts, typical first day stuff. Here's how to find the schedule of lectures. Here's how to do the reading. Uh, here are the expectations I have for you. We will have one midterm exam and one final exam. And I think that's it. Uh, so two big evaluation days for you. Um, but for the most part, hey, Ryan, for the most part, um, nothing is planned. And we will evolve as a group. And what you get particularly excited by, I'll probably go in that direction. And if you're bored by something, I'll, 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 I'll change topics, basically. So there are some themes that I want to lay out. Um, and we'll get to the, the nuts and bolts. Um, I do want to talk about logistics about tomorrow and what that is all about. And then uh, some of you are like, huh? What? Tim's like, huh? Really? What? And then uh, I am going to demonstrate how I read a scientific paper because there is no textbook for the class. We will be reading scientific papers in here regularly. And I don't know if you've ever, I know some of you have never read a scientific paper before and maybe not even sure what the phrase means. And so I will demonstrate that as well. So there's lots that needs to be explained, and that's what we're doing here on the first day. So first things first, here's a little quick story. Let's see if I, I, I can keep the energy going in the room without uh, killing it, because I'm going to be talking about myself. I'll make it quick, I hope. I showed up here 30 years ago. Uh, we were not in this building. This building did not exist. We had seven geology majors and two and a half faculty, basically, and those guys were about ready to retire. So I was brought in to build the program, to attract people into the program. And I was teaching 101 in the classroom with a chalk. This before the internet, man. This before email, you know. I was just like walk into a classroom and do stuff on a chalkboard like I'll be doing with you. And my whole job was to be kind of the Pied Piper, to get people to come into this geology program. And if I could get the people into the program, then we could build the, pro we could hire more staff people. We could have a geology graduate program. We could do a whole bunch of things, but it kind of rested on me to kind of build the foundation or the base of the group, the department. And so it worked. And one of the reasons it worked is because I devised a class called Geology 210. How many people have taken Geology 210? Half of you have. And maybe it was actually in the old days when you actually went down to Bishop, California. So it was actual field class. So to fill the rest of you in, I promise this has something to do with our class here. 
the design was, I teach 101, I get somebody excited, it's 1994, I say, okay, fall quarter, we're going to throw you in a van, we're going to drive two days down to Eastern California, we're going to live together for 15 days at a research station. We're going to eat breakfast together. We're going to talk about what's on television. You know, this was a long time ago. We're going to sing around the campfire, the whole thing. And we're going to go hiking every day, and we're going to teach you how to make geologic maps. And so it became a required part of our major. And that 210 was a big way to not only attract people to the program, but keep them there. Because if you were down there with 25 of your new best friends, and you're all coming back to Ellensburg, these two guys right here, you know, they went out to, to catch up, you know? So it's a really intense bonding experience, not only geologically, but otherwise as well. And uh, Rachel's like, oh, yeah, that was too much bonding. And was, well, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. But um, the point is that was a key part of our program, and I, therefore, was a key part of the program advising-wise because, of course, you get to know people way more than you want to when you're living together for 15 days in your van hour after hour, and you, people are crying, and they're hot, and it's dirty, and the, the whole thing. <coughs> Well, I'm an older person now, and about 10 years ago, my knees didn't work anymore. I had uh, ma major problems with my knees, so I said, I, I got to stop this 210. And it's time, I've been doing it for 20 years, it's time to give it on to some young, younger faculty because it's kind of a plum gig. So Ann Egger and Bree McGinnis have been teaching it since, and they just took the baton from me and a guy named Charlie Rubin. So the department chair at the time said, okay, I'll work you a, a deal. If you stop doing 210, okay. But you need to do some kind of field class where you're still connecting with our students. This is about 10 years ago. So we started Geology 351. And about 10 years ago, I was also starting to make videos in the field. And I had a friend named Tom Foster who was introducing me to all these amazing places within an hour and a half drive of here. And I'd never been to these. I'd lived in Ellensburg for 20 years. I'd never been to the Drumheller channels or some of these other really great places. And I saw that there was a void in our program, that geology majors were graduating from this school and they had never been to the Wenatchee Pinnacles. Some of them hadn't even gotten out of a car and frickin' Vantage and walked around. They're geology majors. And I thought, okay. So this is something I can do. I can get people directly to these places and I can use all this new stuff I've learned to make these video probes to two minute geology and some other videos like that. And I could, I could make this work. So I started teaching 351 in the spring. Okay, we're up to present day. I have evolved with 351 to not just take you to the same places that I went before, with students, I want to learn new things. And that brings us to this live stream business. Especially last fall, I was pushing myself to learn a bunch of new things involving scientific papers. And this home audience uh, feels a connection to me partly because I admit I don't know most of the stuff. And so we're like learning it together essentially. And that's what we're going to be doing in here. It's going to be kind of like this series called Exotic Terrains A to Z, which I did before Christmas time from my home. So we will be reading scientific papers together. We're going to be learning some new stuff together. And there will be a field component where we're going to places that I have not been before, even though it's within 90-minute drive from here, 60-minute drive from here, 45-minute drive from here. You're like, how's that possible? You Wait a minute. You said you've lived here 30 years and you haven't even been to like the Rhyolite and the Tianaway Formation? That's damn right. I know. I don't know anything. And so we have a very specific window in time that we're going to be focusing on this quarter. And we have a very specific set of places. The dramatic reveal. He goes to green chalkboard number two. I'm only going to say it one more time. We'll never match this energy right now. We will ne we'll never get better than this right now. And you're like, well, I'm just sitting here. I, listen, I can sense when a group is good. I can feel it. 
and there's only one way to go down. So let's let's try to keep right here. Okay, this is good. You coming down with me, Ryan? We're going down, baby. All right. Seattle, Washington, Spokane, Washington. We're not visiting those places this quarter. Chelan, not going that far north. Tri Cities, uh uh. But there's a set of formations that have been studied in incredible detail with some brand new skills, some brand new tools that have me very excited. I don't know why I didn't put Ellensburg on this map, but I didn't. Okay. Ellensburg, Wenatchee, Leavenworth, where Andrew is based. Bluett Pass, Wenatchee River flows basically from the Leavenworth area down to Wenatchee and feeds into the Columbia. Vantage, Washington is over here next to the Columbia. I don't know how we're going to do it. But each week, there will be an optional field day. The first optional field day is tomorrow. We'll get into the... Tim, you're, you're crushed. It's all right. It's okay. Tim's sitting in on the class like he did last quarter. Many of you have see, received the emails from me already. You know the schedule we have in, in, employ, uh, in, in place. But each week, we're going to go to a field site, most of them new to me. I think I'll scout them out ahead of time, so I know a little bit. And I'm going to be emailing you the details on how to get there. So before sunset today, I will send you an email with a meeting place for tomorrow. And more about the field stuff in just a second. So I want to go to some formations. The Tianaway Formation. I know the Tianaway Formation. Seriously, you don't know anything about the Tianaway Formation? I know plenty about the Tianaway Formation with the basalt. But there's also rhyolite in the Tianaway Formation that I don't know anything about. That's objective number one. There's a little town called Liberty. They've been mining gold there for more than 100 years. It's south of Blewett Pass. It's north of Ellensburg. It's half an hour drive. We're going to go there. Go into an active gold mine. There's also gold and silver that has been mined aggressively just a few miles to the east in Wenatchee. I don't know a damn thing. I don't know the reports. I don't know who's worked on those rocks. What kind of connection must there be between the Liberty Gold and the Wenatchee Gold? Don't know. I want to learn. We'll be over in Wenatchee, in other words. Saddle Rock, Castle Rock, Wenatchee Dome, Peshastan Pinnacles. Now, that's different. That's the Chumstick Formation. Now, some of you are from the, most of you are from the west side, maybe. And you're like, you got a sinking feeling around. I, I don't know any of these places. Like, I barely know where the Fred Meyer is in Ellensburg. What, what's this guy talking about? Well, it's, it's stuff that's not far away, and it's been on my list for a while, man, and it's time to get off my list. In other words, it's time to actually do it. So there's a grad student in Purdue Univer at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana, Erin Donaghy. She just published an amazing paper on the Chumstick Formation. She works with a geologist named Mike Eddy. Mike Eddy's at Purdue. I have affiliations with some of these folks now, and so there's more than just an academic reason. I need to learn this stuff because I'm going to be doing things with these folks professionally. So, physically, we're not going to the ice cream factory. Physically, we're not going south to the Yakima River Canyon. Physically, we're not going to the Drumheller Channels. Those are places I've gone before. We're going north. We're going Al Norte, but not very far. Between Leavenworth, Wenatchee, and Ellensburg, that's our sweet spot. We might get as old, we will get as old, as the Swakane Biotite Nice. 
which is approaching 100 million years old. But almost all of what we will do this quarter will be nicely and tidily squeezed into this time window here. Almost everything we do is between 60 and 40 million years ago. And I think I just decided this morning that I'm probably going to do a whole other series of live streams on this time window. I might just call it Eocene, that crazy Eocene, A to Z, because there's just too much to cram into this class. So I think I'm going to save some kind of far-reaching things for that. But I think there's, I know there's tons of meat and potatoes with some of these exciting scientific papers that are new. I'm not assigning something that was done 25 years ago. I'm like, okay, let's read this paper. What, what year is it? 2021? It published two weeks ago? 2020? 2019? 2018? I mean, this is an, these are people from Princeton, from Purdue, from other P schools, I suppose. Uh, Pomona? I don't know. That, they're all here. They're coming here. They're making a pilgrimage. Another P. Here! It's right in our backyard. And I teach at the frickin' school. I don't know anything about it. It's embarrassing. Will you join me? Will you stay with me? If this class works well, and I think it might, we'll have a discussion. We'll go out and see it. We'll have another discussion. We'll move on a little bit. We'll have another paper. We'll have a discussion. We'll go out and see it. We'll come back. We'll do another thing. It's not just classroom. It's not just field. It's a combo. Okay. Uh, I want to do more, of course, with that, but not today. I'm pumped. Another P word. So let's talk about logistics and how to keep up with what we're doing. And this is also for the home viewers as well. I kind of did a little spitball in there, but I was feeling it. Uh, it's time to involve you a little bit now, too. So no embarrassment now, okay? We're, it's, we're, we're all an open book. I'm 58 years old, and I love steak. Okay, we're not, we're not doing that. Okay. Uh, how many have taken Geology 101, and that's it? Okay, a couple of you. Okay, there's 20 of you in the room. Uh, how many, opposite end of the spectrum, how many are graduating seniors, and this is your last quarter here at Central? Okay, so that's two, four, six, seven, eight. Eight of you. Uh, but some of you are in environmental studies and not really coming through the brunt of the geology department, right? So let's try a couple other things just to get a feel for you now. Um, can you hold up how many geology classes have you completed? I have to look at your fingers now and you have to count. It could just be one. Uh, three, three, ten, infinity, one, seven, five, three, seven, seven, eight. The graduating seniors don't have enough fingers, Kyle, ish. Oh. <laughs> All right. This is good. And here's what I mean. Uh, it's good that we have different levels of background. It's good that we have different experiences, that we're not all coming out of the same factory at the same time. Uh, some of you are not geology majors. You're environmental studies majors with a geology emphasis or something else. Anybody else? Kyle? You're the uh, make-your-own-major guy. Kind of, yeah. Individual study. All right. So... Um, we're going to use all of your backgrounds and your uh, points of view. And I hope you hear what I'm saying. I don't want you to leave because uh, Andrew and Matthew and, and, and Rachel, or Rachel yeah. uh, <laughs> have been here for three years or whatever, and they've you know done every class we've offered. And you're going to overhear them talking about somebody you don't know in some class. Oh, yeah, I did my biorefringence in the microscope mineralogy lab. And everybody's welcome here. We can make it all work. I am the kind of, you know, I'm the 
team builder, whatever the phrase is. I'm not just a disseminator of information, and it's my job to make us all work together. And I can do it. I have some experience with that. So please do not feel like this is not for you because there are classmates that are quote-unquote advanced. You'll get a lot out of this regardless of where you are in the series. And I probably am not offering this next spring. I've been offering it every other spring because it's a popular class and, and others are trying to offer their electives and they're like, don't, take a break. Go make a sandcastle or something. I want to teach my class. And Hannah Shamlu is coming this winter, our brand new volcanologist we're very excited about. I think she's teaching volcanology next spring. So I will probably go play in the, in the, in the, in the sandbox. Probably sit in on her class. Okay, logistics. I'm not handing out any paper. I'm not assigning any textbook. This is a fluid class on purpose. I have planned week one, and that's it, on purpose. So how are you supposed to keep track of what's going on? Well, I do have a website. This is the home page of the website, mostly for the home viewers, nickzentner.com. Go there, you'll see a home page like this. And in the very uppermost right corner, it says Geology 351. So how are you supposed to keep up with what's going on in the class? Go to nickzentner.com, buy a rubber tomahawk and a t-shirt. Just kidding, there's no merchandise. Go up to Geology 351, click on it. This is for the homies, I call the home viewers townies. They're, they're, they're all over the world, but I, it's the name I've always used for people who come in from town and sit in on the class. So these guys are all sitting in on the class. My God, there's 1,200 people. So if, when you click on 351, you'll get to this, and the template of this page is from 12 years ago or whatever when I first started making a website. I haven't bothered to change it, so ignore all this stuff. But uh, this is a calendar I have for you. And a quick glance at this shows that we're going out in the field every week, but it alternates between Wednesdays and Fridays. So you remember I was emailing you all, trying to find ways to avoid conflicts. And so some of you have Friday classes that meet every other week. We have speaker series at noon sometimes, uh, Wednesdays, whatever. So I've done my best and I'm, I'm not gonna change anymore. But this is the plan, alternating Wednesdays and Fridays. And you can look ahead. I won't change those. I have, I have, uh, I have that. Uh, I'm Swiss German. I, once I get something on my calendar, I don't, I don't change it unless I have to. Okay? So Wednesday this week, Friday next week, Wednesday, Friday, Wednesday, Friday. I have told the townies that they are not invited. I'll get to you in a second, Rachel. I told the townies that they are not invited into the classroom, at least for the month of April, because we've got a pretty full room and I don't want to get shut down because we have too many bodies in the room. I've also told the townies that nobody is invited to join us in the field. Uh, that doesn't sound very nice, but we're going to talk in just a second about logistics and getting out to the field. And I assume we're going to have 20 cars. So we can't have uh, Harley coming over from Afreda. Hey, you guys, can I join you? Uh-uh, sorry. So I'm a little bit gun shy about that. You might think I'm really full of myself, but, well, I am. But um, I'm going to email you where we're going to meet. I'm not telling you right now. So that's the email I'm going to send you. I, I love email. I I'm not a Canvas guy and other ways to communicate. So. You're going to get an email from me before sunset. Did I say sunrise? Before sunset. And it's going to have a meeting place and a meeting time for tomorrow. And I need input from you. What time you want to meet? I thought 10 in the morning. It's going to take about 45 minutes to drive there from here. I Googled it. It's over in the Vantage area. Um, I don't really... Well, let's get into it. I... I thought that I could convince the university to use the vans. We're in phase three. I guess I was naive. And the motor pool people went to the bosses, and those bosses went to those bosses, and those bosses went to those bosses, and then we went to Mark Larson, the local health official. I was like, uh -uh. 
I said, uh, we'll have a 15-passenger van with four students in it with the windows down and masks on and we're driving to frickin' Vantage. No can do. So I've given up that we can go in the vans. And you all know this. And most of you have said, I have a car and I'll figure out how to get there. So I don't want to collaborate or coordinate or I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to know how you're going to get there. I'm just going to meet you and I'm going to meet friends out there. You're my friends at a set time, set place. I'm just going to meet friends out there. And I cannot require the field days for the class because of those circumstances. I would love to have you join us every week, but they will be optional field days. And the energy is so good that I know that most of you will be there tomorrow. But I don't know. As your plate gets full, more and more full, maybe by the end of the quarter, two of you will show up. I don't know. But it's designed to be a big part of the class, and that's why I gave you the backstory of the class, that the field thing, you know, for years it was Tuesday at 1 for an hour, Thursday at 1 until 5. Like we just meet in the vans and go. And we just be out the whole afternoon. It'll be a great. I wish we could do that. But this is this is our uh, our plan B. Okay, let me pause. Rachel, you want to, anything you want to say now? And then we're also going to figure out a, a good time for us to meet over in the Vantage area tomorrow. Do you have still have yours? Um, yeah, I was going to ask um, if you're going to record any of them because it's unlikely I can make it to either of them. Because they look like. Oh, you can't. Unless we do. Well, um, so Rachel's um, mentioning that she's got conflicts both Wednesdays and Fridays. Am I going to record the field days? Uh, last summer, I was recording in the field, and I have some equipment to do that. Um, I'm going to try to do something. And uh, I, I don't know. Uh, so there'll be a little bit of recording in the field. I, I don't want to commit to anything uh, robust. Uh, and I'm sorry you, you, you can't make it work. Now, I'm happy to meet at 9 in the morning. I can't believe that's going to be popular for others. But um, I mean, eight would be better. Oh, you want to meet at 8? <laughs> I'll meet you in Lake Chelan at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, Rachel. Just kidding. I'm sorry. Really, that... that, that uh, okay. So... Um, I was thinking, so 45-minute drive, let's talk about this. Uh, those that are interested tomorrow, uh, meet at 10, 11, or 12? 11, 12, 10? Okay, let's be democratic about it. Okay, I'll give you another second to think about it, and we're going to do a show of hands, okay? 10, 11, or 12. And, and to give you a sense, uh, not only are these optional hikes, but they're truly hikes where I'm just walking, I'm almost 60, so if you're, you know, full of energy and going to bust way up ahead of me, I don't see you the whole next couple of hours, okay. And uh, if you're very, very nervous about the terrain or something else, you're like, oh, this is just not for me, then, then you just go back to your car and you go home. So I, I'm just walking, and whoever is kind of within earshot, we, we, we visit a little bit. I got some stuff that I, I want to go visit. It's a cool little area that I, I've been to only for the first time a, a month ago. Um, and it involves the Columbia River basalt. Uh, but there is no set, you know, five-hour hike or whatever. I'm thinking, you know, it's in the neighborhood of two or three hours of walking around. And you can make it as long. You can stay out way longer than we are. Uh, or I am, I guess. Is, uh, when I'm done, I'll be done. And I'll head home to play Parcheesi at home with my cat. Okay? 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, or 12 o'clock. Here's 10 o'clock. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? Somebody remember that. Here's 11 o'clock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's noon. <laughs> 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Okay? So I'll send you that email. I'll make sure to confirm that it's 11 o'clock. I will give you the uh, latitude and longitude. I'll give you a passcode. Anybody know what a passcode is? Do you, Tim? No. 
Somebody just told me about passcodes. Like if you look something on Google Maps uh, and you hit you get location, you can get this like weird, it looks like a, like a zip code with a couple letters on it. And I guess it's a much easier way to show locations. I'm going to try passcodes as well as just punching in GPS stuff to your whatever. I'll learn how to best communicate our meeting locations, but 11 o'clock tomorrow. How many think they'll be joining us tomorrow? Most everybody. Okay, great. Um, as far as the classroom sessions are concerned, I'm less casual about that. I need you here. I know we're in a pandemic. I know you're all wearing masks. I know there's other things that are hybrid and everything else and everything's all weird and screwed up. We all know that. We've been at it for a year. But this class is going to work best. Maybe this class will only work if we have pretty much everybody here every, every time. And that's Tuesdays and Thursdays for 50 minutes. And we have a couple extenuating circumstances. Rylin's in Yakima, and she can come up sometimes. And Andrew's uh, already got a gig uh, after graduation, and so he's kind of having to leave early. And, and uh, so I, I'm happy to work with people on occasion, but uh, this part where you come up, you kind of come when you feel like it and you know, roll out of bed or whatever. It's like 1 o'clock. It, we need this. And I am going to teach this kind of like a graduate level class. And I don't mean to sound intimidating, but what I mean by that is uh, I will be calling on you. I will be involving you all, regardless of how uh, kind of uh, introverted or extroverted you are. I was always the one petrified of talking in class. But those that forced me or encouraged me to get involved, I was eternally grateful to them. So I've always remembered that. So my job is to create an environment where we all have different backgrounds, but we feel like what we have to say and how we say it is valued. And it's all just about creating a culture. And I will not be going to the same two people every time. So I'll be very clear in just a second about how to get yourself prepared for these classroom sessions. And my God, why would I show up if the guy's going to call on me? I'm just going to stay in my jammies and watch the live stream later on. My voice is cracking now for some reason. Bullshit. We're not doing that. We're doing this for a whole bunch of reasons. We're doing this together in this room. And for some of us, it feels great. So how many people, this is your first face-to-face -face class in a, in a year? Seven of you. Almost half the class, this is your first face-to-face -face gig in a year. Wow. Let's just think about that. So even more than normal, we want people showing up early. We want people kind of visiting. We want a vibe going. And the more I say early on, the more I kill it. But uh, we want that. And rolling in 10 minutes late, and I was like, what are we doing today? And I was like, what do you think about the book? I didn't read it. Take another class. There's other options. Don't want you here. We want committed people. Especially if it's just the two sessions a week for an hour. That's it, right? If you can't make these field sessions for whatever reason, I'm not going to hold that against you, but um, then we really have to make these two hours per week uh, work. Uh, before I talk about uh, scientific paper, what am I forgetting about the course logistics or anything else that you kind of wanted to don't be shy now. Uh, Ryan. So in terms of the two hikes a week, yeah. how much are you missing out if you don't go to one or the other? Do you kind of go to the same place twice or is it related? We're not communicating now. So there's just one field day per week. So there are two classroom sessions that are required, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 o'clock. There's just one field day per week, and it alternates. It's Wednesday this week. It's Friday the following week, Wednesday, Friday. And how much are you missing? Well, I mean, uh, I can't test you on it. It's not fair for me to do that. Uh, but it's, it will definitely enrich your experience to be out there. And that's why I gave you some of the background. Like, sometimes I bring my guitar. It's so weird, but, like, I'm into being out there with people. 
And that's that 210 experience that we used to have and we still do. But God, there's a, there's, a, there's a whole comfort thing about being in the field and learning things in the field. And some of you are nodding your head furiously now because you've experienced that. It's, that's, that should be like the crux of a whole geology program. And we do a fair number of field programs, field courses, field weekends, but not enough. So if you can make it work, that'd be wonderful. Others? Come on now. Are all of the readings going to be on your website? Uh, thank you, Matthew. Um, so right now, going to the website, I just have one PDF. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, shit. So this will expand. I only have one scientific paper right now. And uh, it's called Rapid Columbia River Basalts by Kazbaum, 2018. So I'm going to show you her paper right now, show you how I recommend reading a scientific paper, especially for the first time. And then that is the place to get the science papers. Now, take a look at me, Matthew. I'm older gentleman, so I, I like to print things out, and I like to actually write right on them. But... Uh, I realize that's not for everybody. Um, and we're about to talk about that paper and how what I'm expecting you to have ready to go by Thursday for our next classroom session. Anybody else, though, about any of this stuff? The field stuff, again, will be clear in the email. Grades are almost all coming from the midterm and the final. Those dates are on the calendar on the website. It's like, I don't know, first Tuesday in May and then the final exam. Tim? That's like for setup. That'll be in the email. That'll yep. The email. Yep. I'll be clear about, about that. And, you know, I like treating people like grown ups. So it's like, here's the time. Here's what to bring. You're not there. We're leaving. I'm not waiting around for you. You know? Any other questions that I'll say are in the email? And why did you bother asking it now? Stupid. Okay, let's let's talk about the paper. So I, I, I'm one part of this live streaming thing I need to fix or improve upon is how to deal with documents because I once we get meeting for real, including this 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 Thursday, I will be still using these chalkboards. It worked really well. I was very pleased. I, in other words, I did this live streaming business from this classroom and these chalkboards. Uh, last quarter with 101. And uh, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. It worked pretty damn well. So I, 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 it's a throwback for me too. But in these cases where I do have some specific things, uh, I can still improve. And so especially today, this is going to be pretty rough. But you're all going to see the, the actual gory details of this Casbon paper uh, when you get there. Before I do that, by the way, um, This is basalt. This is basalt. It's part of the Columbia River basalts. This is the basalt. I mean, this is the Pacific Northwest geology class. This is some pretty hot content coming at you right now. This is uh, basalt. But this is basalt from the Tianaway Formation. It's 49 frickin' million years old. And the first three basalts I showed you are 16 million years old, and they're from the Columbia River basalts. There's a lot of basalt locally. It's not all the same stuff. It tells completely different stories. And it's this 49 million year old basalt that I want to learn more about. And there's 49 million year old, we think, rhyolite, Mason and friends. After the last 101 class, they all went out looking for blue agates. They didn't find much blue agates, but Mason brought back about 75 of these rhyolites they found out on the alluvial fan.
If you haven't picked up on it, we're in the content part now, just before we quit. If you haven't picked up on it yet, the scientific papers are gory with detail, much of it not possible for our brains. And I, I, I mean our. But if we can get familiar and comfortable with reading scientific papers, we can put a story together. We can ask the right questions. And my job is to work towards that narrative, to work towards those questions. And my background helps us know what is unresolved? What is being worked on right now that is tremendously exciting? And again, much of it's not very far away. Now, tomorrow we're going to Vantage, which is the Columbia River Basalt Group. And I'm spending this week, I think I just decided this morning, I think our two sessions in the classroom will tie somehow to that field site. I think I want to organize it that way. So in other words, we'll have a class session right now before we go out, and we'll have another class session on Thursday after we go out, and it will all tie to the Columbia River Basalt group. Okay, you ready? I'm going to demonstrate what you want to do before Thursday at 1 o'clock. What's that? That's our next session. Okay, I chose this paper to start with. I think it's possible to make sense of what's going on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I'm trying to get both cameras to have this work. I think this will work. So this is, what's her name? Jennifer Kasbaum from Princeton University and a co-author, Blair. Rapid eruption of the Columbia River flood basalt in correlation with the mid-Miocene climate optimum. Okay, how are we doing? Some of those words got uh, eruption. I know what that is. Like I Iceland, right? Okay. So I'm not, not going to try to be too uh, gimmicky here. Anytime I'm assigned a scientific paper for a class, that's you, or anytime I want to sit down, I get up, pour myself some coffee, and I read a scientific paper every morning for an hour. Humble brag. That's just how I wake up. I want to feel like I accomplished something when my mind is fresh. I'm not watching Good Morning America. I'm reading a freaking scientific paper. So here's what I do. I don't read it like a bedtime novel. I don't read it with a warm cup of milk and I'm like, every word is the same. It's like, oh, then she, she meets him and what? In the, in the restaurant and then what happened? No. What I do is I, first of all, I read the abstract twice. So all of these scientific papers have a very specific format. Abstract is the first. It's typically a paragraph, maybe two paragraphs. And that abstract is dense. Every word in that abstract is carefully selected. And so I read it twice. Just try to make sense of, I don't know, half of the freaking words. Because everything that this scientific paper is offering is in that abstract. The greatest hits are in the abstract. But it rarely feels good reading that abstract. Even if it's a topic you've been following for 20 years. It's like, what did, what did he say? What, what did she say? Oh, okay. Second time. Uh, yeah, maybe. Okay, got it. Then I leave the app. This is me now. You might have a whole new setup. But this is the level of comprehension I'm expecting, even though you're fresh out of 101. Read the abstract twice. Now here's a section sometimes called background, sometimes called introduction. Just kind of setting up the previous work that's been done on this problem. And I glance through that. I don't read it. I glance through it. Maybe some places I recognize. Maybe a couple of uh, geologist names that I recognize. Oh, 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 so they're tipping their cap to Steve Rydell. Okay, good. Peter Hooper. All right, good. So I'm, I'm moving pretty fast. I might, I might underline. Maybe you can see I have some red that 
I, my method is just a little red pen. So I'll underline certain things. Actually, the first time I don't though. No, I just, I just kind of scum through. And then I'm looking for pictures. I'm not reading anything yet. I just read the abstract twice and now I'm going right to the first figure. Hmm, sexy. Oh, okay. Colors, right? Where am I washing? Okay. Uh huh. It's, colors are explained here a little bit. Got it. All right. Map of the Pacific Northwest, Columbia River Basalt. It's different. Oh, I kind of know. Oh, shit. I kind of know some of this stuff. Grand Ronde. I've heard of that. Imnaha. I guess I kind of heard that from maybe. Now, some of you, I'll, I'll pause for a second. A handful of you are from my 101. Not just last quarter, but over the last couple of years. And so at least early on, you have a bit of an advantage, I guess, because you're familiar with some of the stuff that I like teaching about. So for instance, the Columbia River Basalt Group, some of you from my class have already had two full lectures on that. And some of our advanced seniors maybe haven't learned much at all about the Columbia River Basalt. I'm not sure. Again, don't get freaked out that you don't know anything. My job is to involve everyone the best I can. Okay, so there's a map. Okay, here's four outcrops. And it turns out she's talking about the Columbia River basalts. Wait for it. But she's not studying the basalts. She's looking at layers of stuff between the basalt lava flows that are freaking Mason. Rhyolite. This will be a theme the whole quarter. Something called bimodal volcanism, where you can have a volcanic system that's cranking out fluid basalt and incredibly stiff and sticky rhyolite in the same freaking story. And even the Columbia River basalts, new to me, have some rhyolite deposits, if you look carefully enough, including the Vantage sediment. So she's got four photos with a bunch of detail about what she's trying to show in all four photos, including uh, some old soils that she calls red bowls. That's funny. She calls it red bowls. It's like red bowl. It's like a bowl of... That's funny. Illustration. Time. Subdivisions within the Columbia River Basalt Group. Down to the formation level. Down to the member level. Another diagram. I'm still just looking for pictures. That's all I'm doing. I'm trying to get a general sense. Tim? I'm reading the captions. If I'm interested in what, if I can make sense, I'm intrigued by what she's got. I'm, by the way, I'm not reading the caption on this sucker. What the hell? What is this? It's some climate thing. I don't care. So my bias, my personal bias, my personal interests come in as well. So depending on the illustration or the photo, I'm reading the caption or I'm not. And then by the end, she's got some supplementary data that's on some website somewhere. Not expecting you to do that. Uh, some, I'm sorry. Hang on. No, she doesn't. Usually there's some sort of conclusion paragraph or two. So I'll read that carefully. I notice she does not have that. It surprised me. So I read the abstract twice. I skim through and I look at the pictures and read captions if I'm interested. I look for the conclusion or the summary, and I read that once or twice, which is oftentimes a repeat of what's in the abstract, but in a little bit more uh, narrative way. And then the last part of a scientific paper are all these references, which are other scientific works that have come before, where there's all sorts of references uh, noted. Like, it's, it's, it's awkward reading. Uh, who's, read, who's read a scientific paper before? Oh, y'all, most of you have? <laughs> well, some of you have not, and maybe most of you have not read it the way that I uh, am approaching the, 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 the issue. 
So in the one minute, I, I'm already over time. Give me 30 more seconds. So I'm expecting you to look at Jennifer's paper. I expect you to know... I don't know how to word it. I want you to at least go through her paper as I just suggested. Possibly, you can do this, I guess, any way you like. Possibly you would write out a list of ten, top 10 list of main points that you think she is providing. Let's do that. Just decide it. You're all going to make a top 10 list. If you want to do more than that, fine. But I'm going to go to top your top 10 list. And we'll see if we all have the same top 10 list. What is the top 10 list? Major contributions of this paper. And I guess if you're feeling really out of it, you can add to your, you, part of your top 10 list can be th major things that you, um, what? Can, yeah, I was going to say that, but then it's like, yeah, here's my top 10. I don't get anything. <laughs> Read it. Um, I guess if you're feeling uh, awkward or over your head, uh, they can be small things. Your top 10 list cannot be the 10 major points of the entire paper, but it's like, I got that. I understood that. Basalt is black. That's, that's number five on my list. Okay? So we can all feel like we're making progress, even if we're all not kind of, uh, there's stuff in there that I don't know much about. And I don't know much about climate science, and there's some, there's some tie between uh, basalt stratigraphy and, and, uh, and something called the mid-Miocene climate optimum. To clear what we're doing Thursday, I'm the ringleader, but I'm leaning on you. And my job is to take your top 10 lists and make some sort of narrative work. It's too young for our 60 to 40, but we're starting with the basalts that are young to know that we're not going back to them the rest of the class. And there's interesting parallels between the Columbia River basalt group and the Tianaway Formation. Thank you for your patience. I promise I won't run over every time. Thus concludes session one of Geology 351. I'll see most of you tomorrow. I'll send that email as soon as I can. 11 o'clock. Thank you and goodbye. I love you, I guess. All right. I'm going to say a couple things to the students, and then we'll do a little live Q&A if you like. I don't know if there's much to ask about today, but we'll try it anyway. And I saw somebody standing in the hallway that maybe was a townie, and I think I gave him a dirty look, but hopefully it was an administrator. I'll be back in just a second. What's up, Kyle? No way, man. This is not going to be a repeat of 101. Oh, give me. Yeah, the same instructor. All right, good, good. We'll make good progress. I have, I have confidence. Thank you. Jim. Uh, a couple of questions. Yeah. So, I mean, everything you just said for the introductory class, I feel like the information you're looking for would be monumentally important to the research that I'll do in my grad school. Good. I would love if, if I could, well, I don't know, this is really up to you, and I know yeah. what you said about counties, but right. I would really love the opportunity to try and go to some of these field oh, trips and participate if possible. I, I, I consider you a student, not a townie. Cool. So, yeah. I mean, I, I'd be willing to help out with any kind of, if you do want to do any stream, uh, kind of streaming stuff in the field, I could help out with stuff Thank like you. that. If Thank you. you. Hand. And then, um, Thank you. So I can email you to make sure I get on an email list. I'll, um, I'll make, yeah, please do. I'll okay, make sure I'll I've wish. got the best email address for you. And I'll sure. just I'll just make sure to get you on that email list okay. so we don't have problems. Yeah, the one thing I was bummed earlier in the class is Tomorrow. I'm getting my car fixed in Yakima in the morning. Okay. However, if I beeline it down to Yakima, drop it off, and sure. it'll come back, I should be able to actually still maybe make the meeting. Okay. I might be a little bit, you know, 30, yeah. 45 minutes behind. But I could Whatever track, works. I could track you guys down. So. Um, oh, so you were voting for three in the afternoon? Yeah, right? I was. I was. I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Good, Tim. You might have just been talking to you about this, but do you yeah. want someone to like, take pictures of shit when you're out in the field? Thank you, but I, I am kind of a one-man show sure. when I got stuff set up. I appreciate the offer, yeah, yeah. but I think I think I know how I want to do it. And uh, I don't know if I can keep people off camera, but we'll have to figure that one out. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just meant, like, props and details yeah. and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Sure. Are we allowed yeah. to bring tools such as rock hammers with us? Oh yeah. Because I just got a new one. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have a little. I have a little equipment list, which is hardly anything, and then anything extra you want to bring, by by all means, you can show that thing off. Well, I just wasn't sure if we're allowed to take things from the sites because I know some places it's illegal. Some places it is, but not tomorrow. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Good. Hi. I was wondering if you have time to discuss. I wanted to talk about like a, a minor I was with my geology class with my geology major. Oh, good. Yeah. And I was wondering if you have time because I wanted sure. to do, or maybe like a GIS certificate. Okay. And I was wondering if I could fit that into my schedule my last year. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, let's find a time to visit. Um, well, are you free in a half an hour? Okay, uh, let me finish with the home viewers, uh -huh. and then uh, it's 2 o'clock. Can I meet you in my office at 2.30? Yeah, sounds good. Good. Okay, we'll see you then. Hey. Hey, I want to chat with you real quick. Sure. Oh, I am Dr. Wilquist, grad student that I, I've oh, emailed you previous course, yeah. trying to make it organized, schedule to right. get in your class, and it yeah. hasn't worked out yet. So it finally looks like it's going to work this quarter. Good. Um, but, so I just wanted to see if I could sit in on it or take this class, um, even though I have not had a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one geology. I've tried to uh, get the class, and it sure. just never works. Um, uh, either one is fine with me. Okay. Does it, is it better for you to sit in, or is it better for you to actually officially register? Um. So I'm going to meet with Carl sometime okay. in the next few days, mm -hmm. and we'll see with uh, my hours because this is my last uh, quarter here okay um if i can take it i want to good um if nothing else then i would really like to sit in sure. on it. I, i'm i'm easy either way okay i didn't know if it, you thought it would be too advanced if i had time geology 101 possibly but you can kind of decide that maybe that's a vote for sitting in if you feel like you're a little bit nervous about getting overwhelmed but uh, um well i i want to learn as much as i can i think it'll be really good for my thesis yeah. um so yeah. I'll, I'll try to take it if I can, if okay. it's okay with you. Yeah, you bet. Okay. That's great. Well, and then if it turns out that I can't and I need to sit in, do I need to officially like nope. register for auditing or anything? Or I can nope. just show up. Yep, you'll just, I'll consider you a student. Okay, wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, again. sounds I'll, good. I'll be there tomorrow. Oh, good. Are good. You here yeah, kind of. Do I have your email? Oh, yeah, I need to get on the email list. Please, please email me. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll just shoot you an email and then good. you can add me. And your name again? Jessica. Cox. Jessica. Okay, Jessica. All Thank right, you. Well, see ya. All right, you bet. Okay, let's do it. I don't. You know, this is kind of weird. Did you guys want to talk? I have a question. Yeah. For you. So I had a coach with Gilmore at noon on Wednesday. Yeah. And I have research with Angela at 9:15 on Fridays. Do you think? Oh, I don't know. I think that's on you if you want to ask her, but I, I, I wouldn't feel right to get involved there. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's do a little bit of live Q and A quick before I sign off. And uh, I guess it's just about the class. This will be quick, I guess, right? So if you're new to us, we'll do a little upper uppercase, and I'll try to answer a few questions. Saber, are the Tianwei basalts a single flow or multiple flows? Uh, I have the feeling this is going to be uh, uh, me saying, good idea, I'll look into it. Saber, good idea, I'll look into it. There are many dozens of feeder dikes. I can't believe they were all active at the same time, but I don't think anybody's figured that out. Um Any points or details to focus on in rapid CRBs for a novice? Uh, well, you kind of heard what I said there to the to the students, and we do have a couple who are pretty. They are novices. I could tell that they're a little bit nervous about this. Um, so, pretty much what I said to the students is the same for you. 
uh, yeah, there's hardly any content today, so I, is this even worth it? Uh, I'll look for a couple more. Uh, looks like some of you are confused on how to get this. So for those who want to actually read the science papers and struggle with them and try to do your own work at home, this is uh, nickzentner.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, it says Geology 351. It used to say Geology 101, not anymore. It says Geology 351. If you click on that, you'll get to a page that looks like this. Thanks for coming. We'll see you tomorrow. Sorry, Rachel. And this is the paper. And I will continue to add to this list. So this, this, this list of PDFs will get longer and longer. That's how to get to the scientific paper. There is no yellow book. There is no textbook. There is no uh, anything else. Did you have a question, young man? No. Okay. Oh, are you? On that thing? No. Oh, you're just kind of, oh, gotcha. Man, I can tell I'm getting older. Oh, really? Who's, who's at home watching it? What's, it? what's your dad's name? Derek Kaufman. Hello. Your son is right over here. I'd love to have him get on camera and wave to you, but I guess we can't do that. But your son, what was your first name again? Aiden. Aiden Hoffman. Aiden Hoffman is in the in the room. Nice job. Uh, yeah. Um, I I don't know what I'm doing in the field, especially tomorrow. I think I'll have Gizmo with me if you're familiar. I did a series called Nick on the Fly last summer, and I made about I don't know what were there about 25 of those, and I got pretty comfortable with the. The handheld, uh, I call it gizmo. It's a little gimbal, I guess, to kind of stabilize things. I haven't used it since August, I guess, so it'll take me a while to remember how to use it. But there's a couple cool spots that I might try to film. So I don't know, but I might. Uh, I don't know. So let's say I film a little bit tomorrow in the field. And then I just do some real quick editing or something and upload it just as a regular video. Maybe I'll add that in the series. Like, um, yeah, I might do that. So like session one is today. Session two for 351 is Thursday. And session three will be this little edited Vantage video that I'll post, I don't know whenever it's convenient for me, maybe over the weekend or something. I don't have to think about that, but I, I'm not promising some field stuff, although it would be nice, wouldn't it, to include some, especially if we're talking about some real juicy details in the classroom and then we actually go to the site. That'd be kind of fun. Mark hates the gizmo. Thanks, Mark. Um, Marcel, why 60 to 40 and not 60 to 16? Uh, there's a couple reasons. Um, 60 to 40 is a very exciting time tectonically here in the Pacific Northwest, and I think we will get into some of that. I know we will get into some of that, especially in May. Uh, another way to answer it is that uh, younger than 40 uh, is a whole nother chapter, and I know even less about that chapter. So... You know, part of my experience as a teacher is to, to know what is doable in the given amount of time. I mean, if you count up the number of classroom sessions for this 351, I, I think it's like 20 sessions, you know. So um, even though I don't know what we're doing week to week, I, I have a general sense of what we can accomplish in 20 sessions. Uh, I'm very excited about the group. There was great energy, even though I, I half the people were new to me. Uh, Stephen, oh, I assume you won't do a live stream tomorrow. Well, that's a thought. 
again, uh, when I was live streaming last year, I did some live streams from the field and I was literally driving around waiting to find a place that had three or four bars of Verizon coverage. Some of you remember that. Uh, I guess I can check my phone at this mystery location and see how many bars there are. That's a thought. Hadn't even thought about that. I mean, I could, I could, I could uh, run into some friends out there, right? Hmm. Thanks for the idea. Uh, again, you know, there's no money involved in this site. There's no subscription fee. There's no. There's nothing formal. And here's a great example of why I choose to keep money out of this. Because I don't, I don't owe you anything. <laughs> you know, I, I've I've run into this a couple other times too, and I've I've kind of verbalized it. But I like that I can do kind of what I want to do, and I don't feel obligated. I think it would if it if if I if we got into that money stuff, and then I, you know, or special special videos only for members or something, uh, I, I would lose um, my motivation and my interest, I think, because then it feels like I have to do X, Y, and Z. I, I don't like that feeling. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe live stream tomorrow, maybe not. What do we say we're meeting? We're meeting at 11. I guess we'll be out, I don't know, maybe I'll be live streaming at 11.30. I guess we will find out. A couple more. I'm going to visit with, uh, uh, so I don't have the names of everybody yet. Any other questions or just kind of general uh, kind of, uh, yeah, the paying students first, correct. They will get my full attention. But remember now, these, these field experiences are, it's just a hike with them those that want to come. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to keep my friends off camera, Kent. They're just friends. Happen to meet out there. Uh, Bob, can you still get the yellow book from last time? I don't know that. Uh, if you can find the... Uh, it's called the Wildcat Shop or Wildcat Store in the Student Union Building. Give them a call. Maybe there's still a couple freebies left. Otherwise, I'm, I'm guessing they're out of print. They're not making any new. Well, I don't know, but I don't think they. I don't think there's any more left. Uh, M Geofire, do the Washington 40 million year events correlate to the Yellowstone hotspot change in direction of the Pacific? Kind of. Um, that's, that's a good example of, you know, I got back from the family vacation, which was a wonderful break, and saw two of our boys down there who flew in from different locations, and my mother is now wintering in Scottsdale, Arizona. So that was just such a, a great uh, break. And, uh, and then we got back last weekend and I started thinking about this course really seriously for the first time. What was your question? Oh yeah. And I started making lists of all the things that I could explore with this group between 60 and 40 million years ago. And it became a really long list. And I'm like, oh, I can't do all this in 20 sessions. And I did kind of like that A to Z series of the exotic terrains last fall. And I don't know when I'll do a next A to Z series, but I liked that format and I liked the level of detail that we were getting into. So that's a good example. Is there a connection between a sudden change in the Pacific plate motion and some kind of major action here in the Northwest? Maybe, but I'll probably keep that till the whenever that live stream is. I'll say the fall. I don't really know. Um, 
So I'm going to be bored if we just stay with the Tianway formation and the Chumstick formation and the Swak formation and a couple other things in central Washington. I know myself enough to know that I'll want to plug into something broader. But I don't think I want to... Like Jerome Lessman up in British Columbia has offered to help again with this new this with this class 351, and he sent me all sorts of papers. And I kind of told Jerome, like, as the more I think about it, the more I I think I'm going to hold off on doing stuff with the com loops magmas up there and the laramide and flat slab, whatever. There's there's a lot of angles to take between 60 and 40, but it is an exciting time, and I'm I'm getting pretty uh, serious about it. Kathy, will you podcast for extra credit? Some of you know that I have an audio podcast and I kind of sit down and do those when I, when I, uh, when the mood strikes. Again, I don't feel obligated. <laughs> so it's been a month since I've done one of those audio podcasts. Um, and I guess I will, as we learn new things in the classroom here, I'll probably be more motivated to do an audio podcast. All right, well, we'll finish. Oh, well, you miss Mason. But we'll finish with that. So many of you, have, I've seen many of your comments. You're wondering, like, what happened with the 101 students and that sort of thing. Remember, there were about 20 101 students, similar to 20 students spread out in this auditorium for 351. And even though you never saw the 101 students, you knew all the names if you were with us every morning. And Mason did very well. I'm sure he will not continue in geology uh, for a number of reasons, but uh, it was a pleasure to have him in class. After our Ellensburg Blue session, uh, Mason and about, I think about, 10 or 12 of the students, so like half the class, went out to look for blue agates. As I was signing off, I sent him directions. And so for the final exam the next day, he showed up with a full backpack full of rocks, some of them I shared today. But um, Bryce is back. Tim is back. That's the same Tim who's sitting in on this class as well. He's preparing to be a graduate student in the fall here in the geology department. And Emily, too, has declared her geology major. So she's not in this class, but she's in a different geology class this quarter, and she will eventually be in 351, I presume, in a couple of years. A toast to you. Thank you for finding us and joining us for this first Geology 351 session. Not much content today, but hopefully you have a sense of the general approach that we will use this quarter. Here's to you. Here's to your health. I know that even though things are looking up here in central Washington and have for quite a few weeks now, I know that in many of your communities you are still still locked down and I feel for you and your family and your friends and all we can do is hope for things to turn the right way and the vaccinations continue to outpace the spread. Wouldn't it be nice by the end of this quarter that almost all of us watching around the world are dealing with a much brighter future than it feels like uh, currently. All we can do is hope. Here's to hope and here's to you. I think I'll sign off today. I don't know. 50% chance I'll film something tomorrow, whether it's live or whether it's uh, some uploaded video later on. But you can plan on Tuesdays and Thursdays for sure at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.
Goodbye from Ellensburg, Washington, USA.